Hey everyone, and welcome to the Hemp Horticulture Series. Today, we'll be showing you how an ebb and flow hydroponic system works. Oh. Ebb and flow, also known as flood and drain, is one of the most common hydroponic systems out there due to its simple and easy to understand concept paired with its high versatility and scalability. And while an ebb and flow system contains a lot of components, making it harder to set up when compared with a simpler hydroponic method, it all comes together rather intuitively and is very easy to maintain once put together. So how does the system work? The idea of ebb and flow takes the basic idea of watering a plant and makes two distinct improvements. One, it automates the watering schedule. And two, instead of watering from the top and waiting for the water to seep down enough to reach the roots, an ebb and flow system waters from the bottom up so that the water will always reach the root zone while never having to wet the top of the grow medium. So how do we water from below? First, we have the plant. And because we're watering the plant periodically, the plant will need to be in a grow medium that helps it retain some of the water each time the roots are flooded. Next, we'll need water to flood the plant roots with. But because we need to drain it out as well, the water will need to be drained and then stored in a separate reservoir. The reservoir now can be placed anywhere nearby the plant. And for this example, we'll be placing it under the plant, as this is the most common location, since it lets gravity do all the work in draining the water back to the reservoir. Now the only missing piece is getting the water to the roots, which will require a water pump to do so. And that's the basics for how the system works. There are a couple of things to note though. With this setup, the water actually drains back from the water pump once the pump is turned off as well. So this drain pipe is also used as an overflow pipe, just in case the water levels get too high while the pump is on, so that the entire plant tray doesn't flood. And because of this, you'll need to raise it as far up as you want the water levels to reach. Next is that although this basic build is made for one plant, the beauty of an ebb and flow system is that it can scale easily by increasing the reservoir and plant tray sizes. In fact, you don't even need to plant the plants in the plant tray at all. Just use multiple fabric pots placed inside of the plant tray that allows water to pass through it easily. And this method allows for the use of smaller grow mediums that would traditionally clog up a hydroponic system. Cocoa coir, perlite. I mean, this even works with traditional soil mixes because of the use of fabric pots. So as you can see, the versatility of the system makes it a great option for both small and large grows with the option to scale up or down by just changing out a few pieces. The cons with the system is that because the water is constantly cycling back and forth, by passing through the roots and the grow medium, the pH as well as the parts per million of the nutrients in the water could fluctuate and drift, causing problems in either direction. To combat this, the reservoir should be changed often, typically on a weekly basis. And because of this, an ebb and flow system is not as water friendly as some of the other options available. As for how long to flood the roots, Generally, you'll want to run the pump to fill the plant tray until right where it reaches the overflow drain. And that short period of time is all you need to get the water and nutrients to the roots. As for how often you'll need to do this, this completely depends on the grow medium used, as one that can retain a lot of water and nutrients, such as soil and cocoa coir, might only need to be flooded once a day or less while other grow mediums that can't retain much water, such as hydrogen and perlite, will require multiple floods a day. 
The fun of course is trying to figure out by checking on the plants periodically to see when they start to show signs of underwatering to know how often your plants need water. Finally, while a typical common do-it-yourself ebb and flow system relies on gravity to work, taking up a lot of vertical space in the grow room with one plant tray to hold one or multiple plants. There are more advanced systems available for purchase that have the reservoir as the same height as the plant tray and typically utilizes multiple trays with each plant getting their own individual pot. So if you want to use an ebb and flow system but your grow space is vertically challenged, then a pre-built off-the-shelf ebb and flow system pumping and then draining the reservoir water through horizontal pipes is another option to consider. And that's it. Like the content? Then be sure to check out our beginner's guide to creating CBD products from scratch. Available at Amazon in print and digital with links in the description below. You can also find us at hempinapot.com.